Hortens alert. Hortens alert de Meritens French pronunciation. O artas alar listen. Pseudonym prudence to salmon alespax. 7 September 1801, 28 February 1879, was an Italian French feminist writer and essayist. Her novels, based on her adventures, did not have much success except for less enchantments to prudence, avec George Sand, The Enchantment of Prudence, with George Sand 1873, which had a succès de scandale. Early Years and Education Allart was born in Milan in 1801. Her French father was Nicolas Jean Gabriel Allart, and her French mother was the writer Marie Francois Gay, who had translated the works of the English Gothic author and Radcliffe. Her maternal aunt was the writer Sophie Gay, and her cousin was Delphine de Girardin. In 1817, her father died. She had received what was considered to be a good education. Career, Rur. Allart was an enthusiastic supporter of the vanquished Napoleon, and in 1819 she wrote to Henry Gashin Bertrand and volunteered to travel to St. Helena to nurse the ex-emperor who was ill. Bertrand later offered her a job as a governess and commented that he thought that Napoleon would have fallen in love with her if she had been successful in traveling to be his nurse. Napoleon and her mother died, leaving her an orphan at the age of a Twenty. For some two years, she worked as a governess in the household of General Bertrand, where she met the Comte de Sampaio, a Portuguese gentleman. She became his mistress, and in 1826 gave birth to his son Marcus. Sampaio abandoned her before she gave birth. Allart's first work was published in 1821. At this time, she was living with the Countess Rignal de St. Jean d'Angely, who became a close friend when she confessed to also wanting to go and tend to the ailing Napoleon. The Countess introduced Allart to two suitors, the economist Hippolyte Passy and the poet Pierre-Jean de Beranger. Beranger and Passy were to be lifelong friends. Allart traveled to Florence, where, after a time, she appears to have had an affair with Gino Caponi, who had been interested in a book entitled La Conjuration Danvoice, which she had published when she was and she was she was twenty one another early work of hers was a volume of letters to George Sand, with whose moral and religious principles she much sympathized, and who later on pronounced her to be one of the glories of her sex. Allart was a lifelong lover of George Sand, but they had an open relationship in eighteen twenty nine Allart was in Rome on a visit to her sister. There, she met Francois René de Chateaubriand, and they became lovers. Within a few weeks, he proceeded to Paris, and Allart followed him there, taking an apartment in the Rue Denfer. In England, she met Henry Bulwer Lytton, afterwards Lord Dawling, and they became lovers, which Allart told Chateaubriand on her return, under notions of probity, and being faithful in her temporary unions. In 1843, she married the French aristocrat Napoleon Louis Frederic Corneille de Meritens de Malvesi, but she left him the following year. Allart, a notable figure in Paris intellectual circles, lived several miles outside Paris with her books, which she called her true lovers. She did not recommend that women should abandon men. In fact, in her novel Setemia, her heroine enjoys her male lovers, but is not defined by them but by her lack of interdependence, her intellectual maturity, and her children. This was the life that Allard lived, surviving without having to rely on a supportive family. She argued that women needed political reform of their lot, and if this meant that women needed to abandon the two-parent family, then this would be acceptable. Allard foresaw a world where society was not democratic or organized by men but a meritocratic society run by women and men of higher abilities than the general population. She professed herself a Protestant, and had a kind of religiosity, however hazy. Allart was loyal, generous, and true to her lovers, who usually became her friends. A single mother of two sons, Allart wrote that her sons were not accidents, and this was the life she had chosen. Allart recorded her adventures in her books, veiling them only slightly as fiction. Her novel, Jerome, 1829, for example, 
is a thinly disguised account of her experiences with Sampeo, whom she portrayed in the book as a celibate Roman prelate. With the exception of less enchantments to prudence, Avic George Sand, 1873, which had a succès de scandale, none of her novels had much success. Allart died in Montlhery in 1879 and is buried in the cemetery at Berg-la-Rieny. Selected Works S -s 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 -s